All right, so I'm Jeremy Shoemaker, president of Shoemoney Capital. Shoemoney Capital um, was recently formed relatively as we decided we wanted to run a real company. And so it was like then we needed true corporate structure. Um, so who am I um, and why am I um, here, I guess? Um, in 2010, I won the most influential person on the internet of Fast Company Magazine, and they did a cover thing with that. And I don't know that they necessarily wanted me to win because they had like a lot of celebrities on there, but what I do for a living is convince people to do things, right? So send out a compelling thing about why you should do this and do what I say. And so I did that way more than anyone else. Um, I started the world's largest mobile affiliate site in 2002, um, Commission Junction. I was averaging 400K a month in revenue. I was nominated for a presidential award in 2008 under George Bush. Um, 2009, uh, the Affiliate Summit Pinnacle Award. 2005, we were spending $70,000 $90,000 a day on Facebook, which made us one of the largest advertisers of their platform, which got me elected to their um, advisory board on the monetary side. So, if you ever heard the Drake song, Started From The Bottom, right? So, I love that song, it's actually my ring back tone. Uh, so, it's interesting when people call and they're like, what was that? I mean, anyway, so I really did start from the bottom. I mean, this is me, 2003-ish. I was 420 pounds in massive credit card debt. Um, I really couldn't, I never really have been able to work for anyone else um, in my life. I've pretty much been fired from every job I've had ever. Uh, I just try to make a difference and when I do, you're not compensated for it. So then I get pissy and it doesn't work out. Um, I smoked cigarettes today, never got up for noon, I played a lot of uh, World of Warcraft, EverQuest style games. Basically lived in that world because my real world kind of sucked. But there I could be this badass guy with a flaming sword and got a hot chick on the back of my horse cruising around. Okay. So while I was working at Wells Fargo Financial, I had this thought of you know, I, I got these cool Nextel phones and they had the capabilities to, they had like these graphic color capabilities. They were like some of the first color basically enabled phones. So I thought what would be really cool is if I could put a picture of like my girlfriend and my dog on the camera. That would be really cool, like a wallpaper kind of thing. And there was nothing like that out there. So I did all this research on how to do it. It was very complicated. You have to have a certain image format, certain size, certain colors. And it wasn't easy, so I wrote a guide on how to do it. I did it myself, wrote a guide on how to do it. Nobody could figure it out. Everyone was sending me images to do for them, right? And it got to be to the point where it was like 50 plus a day, and then it got to be like 100 plus a day. So then I was like, I wonder if I could find a way to programmatically do this, right? And so what I mean by that is just made a website, people could upload an image, it would spit them back the right format. Very simple. And the site grew to where we were getting somewhere around five to 10,000 a day images that we were converting to people. And then somebody said, you know, you should categorize these images, allow people to say, this is a dog photo, this is a female, this is a model, this is a whatever category it falls into. And now that's referred to as tagging, right? But um, back then we called it, you know, just categorizing. So um, then I got into the same thing as the years evolved into ringtones, right? Same concept, but all different phones had different formats for ringtones. Were, you couldn't buy them over the air at that time. So you had to have a cable to plug into your phone, complicated on making the right format. So I did the same thing with ringtones, right? So then I made the site, the site became really popular, and this is what it originally looked like. And I called it Next Pimp, which was basically pimp out your Nextel phone. Um, interesting about this, Nextel didn't like that I basically had their look and feel of their site. So they sued me in federal court. I won because we were able to demonstrate that uh, we were not infringing on their copyright. In fact, we had over 500 uh, pages of server logs that actually were coming from Nextel stores and letters from Nextel employees saying that because of our site, they were able to make more sales, right? So um, this site grew very, very rapidly and really helped me kind of figure out um, how, where I started making money. I got a call from Google one day and they said, hey, you've got this mobile site, it's got all this traffic, we have all these advertisers in the mobile space. You know, do you know you can place Google ads on your site and you can actually make money? And I was like, no, I didn't know that. 
So they said, okay, we'll just go here, copy paste the code on there, which is what you see here, and um, you'll make some money. So I did that, and you know, this was basically the first month I made money online, and um, it was 108 bucks, which is like we've discussed, the minimum payout was 100 bucks. Okay, so as you can see here, you know, I'm getting like whatever per click. Um, the site continued to grow over the next course of the year. I had new features. I started a forum on there where people could ask questions about how to do stuff. And um, the, the Google income ramped up pretty rapidly. So within a year, fast forward a year, and so you can see like the difference in revenue, right? So, and this is almost 100% profit. Interesting thing is I was canned for my last job in June, right? And so this is August. So I was on unemployment actually when this, when I, when this blew up. And if you want to see a weird look on a banker's face, you're taking a, a check for 130 some thousand dollars and also an unemployment check and it looks very strange, right? So they held it for like a certain amount of time, like 90 days. It was ridiculous. But that was the last month I was on unemployment. So this is the check that became really famous. Um, and little did I know that I took a picture of it. I have my mother-in-law and my wife was like, why are you taking a picture of this? And I said, well, because any day this is going to stop. And then I'll write a book about how I made so much money with that sense, right? And make a lot of money. Um, so, and little did I know even that they, after this month, never sent out paper checks anymore. It was all wire transfers if you did over $10,000. So nobody knew, like everyone now is saying, like, God, if I would have known, I'd made more than that. I would have taken a picture with it and used it for my purposes. But nobody did. So then Google put me on kind of like the world tour of speaking. So I'd go out and I'd talk to all these people about how to make money, my crazy story, being overweight, whatever, and how Google saved my life. And that's what they loved. And they loved to promote me. And so it kind of turned me into like a guru, if you will, which I didn't really like. And ended up really, as I was learning um, how to make money, I kind of figured out like, okay, these people are paying me from Google. They're buying ads through Google to put on my site. So Google's getting their 20%. They're paying, you know, whatever. They're bidding against each other. What if I cut out Google and go direct to these people? And that's called affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, I'll go into a little bit more depth here in a second. But basically, as an affiliate marketer, all you are is a commission salesperson, right? So if you want to sell, kick your friends like to iTunes to a cool song and use your affiliate link through LinkShare, I think is there, share sale, is the, the thing they go through, then you get a percentage if that person buys anything. You know, send them to apple.com, you get like 5%. Send them to Amazon on a DVD or something, and you get 8% and you get 8% of anything they buy, right? So that's just the affiliate marketing. I also did donations. So it was like, um, if you want to help out the site, you can donate money. Um, and then I got into subscriptions as well, which was in the forum, I decided to make it so you could pay to belong to this premium forum where people were available to help you all the time. And other things, I started doing saleable goods, right? Because I had all these people that needed data cables, so why not sell data cables? And it was really an awesome business because I paid like five cents a piece from China in bulk ordering and I charged like 30 with shipping. So it was extremely profitable. And then I also just sold direct banner ads when like Sprint would come to us or other people like that. So the actual monetization, um, by 2006-ish, we had uh, over 70,000 paying subscribers to the forums, and that was at $19 every six months. I actually tested all these different price points, and I did like $20 for a year's membership, but more people signed up for $19.95 every six months, right? It was very strange, and I tested all these other ones. And then even at the end, I tested $5 a month, and that one even converted better. No, that's a lot more, it's $60 a year, right? It's crazy, like, the price points and, and how, crazy they are. And then I drove all these leads to ringtone companies, which is affiliate marketing. And I got paid every time somebody signed up. Um, a lot of money in contextual revenue, um, sold a lot of data cables, a lot of phone covers, all this other stuff we had. And we got a decent amount of money. And unfortunately, the marketplace for this kind of industry totally changed. Cell phone providers were no longer able to charge for ringtones the way that 
we were doing it, all this stuff. So revenue just went like straight crap. But it still was able to be sold in 2010 for a couple hundred grand. There was a small fraction, small, small fraction of what it made per month. Funny thing is I still have people paying for subscriptions through PayPal, even though, yeah, I haven't owned the site for almost four years. So it's really, PayPal's a magical thing because it's uh, better than a credit card because it always updates, right? Okay, so um, in 2006, after I started going to all these conferences and meeting people, I said, you know, I would meet some of the same people that were actually doing really cool stuff. And I said to them, you know, what would be super cool is if, you know, there's 3,000 people here and you guys are like four people. This is the reason I come here to talk with you four people. But what if we could weed out these thousands of people and talk to the core people that are actually doing stuff and not all these people who just want to learn how to do stuff that we could actually do business with. And I said, all right, well, I'm going to do a conference and I don't know if it'll work. I'm going to charge a ton of money to do it and it's going to be very limited. We're going to screen everybody to make sure they're doing a certain amount of revenue, what they're doing, what they want to accomplish. And so we charge $8,000 a ticket. Um, every year since the beginning of the year it's sold out and this, the next event will be our 10th event. We hope to have it this year's running out, but hope to have it by the end of first quarter next year. So that was the company I started. And as you'll, you'll see as I continue to go through all these companies that I started, that the real business model has always been to find something that I want, right? Like I wanted that conference bad. I wanted to attend that conference. And if somebody would have had that, I would have done it. Nobody did it, so I did it, right? It's the, I basically created the conference I always wanted to attend. Um, so yeah, just affiliate marketing, you're just a commission salesperson. I'll go through some quick things about affiliate marketing on how I've done it. No. So I wrote a post about Visa Blackheart on my blog. Right, just a simple post about, and what I did was is I called out, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Black American Express, the Centurion card, right? So it's like this mythical card that you get all this stuff and it's, it's really a great benefit. Um, but so they basically, Visa kind of played on that and made their black card, they called it the black card. And so even though it didn't really have nothing on benefits, I like totally called it out and said it was the new American Express and American Express sucks now and all this stuff, which I basically just wanted to cause a shitstorm um, between, because I knew all the American Express people would like link to this and talk about it and all that crap. And the best thing about this was is it had an affiliate program where each person you got to sign up, you got $100, okay? Pretty sweet. So the result of that is because I got so many people to link to it and all this stuff, is that it was number one in Google for Visa Black Card, right? Even ahead of them. And this listing here, they had to pay for, right? So, and you can see it's not very compelling compared to my stuff, because I have a double listing there and everything. So, when you went there, you read that article. It was the first thing, so people were constantly Googling Visa Black Card, seeing that. So, that was just one of the things I did. And here's, you know, a snapshot of the money that I made from that. So, from one blog post, uh, $48,600, right? And this was when the blog was very early stages. Didn't have a lot of domain authority. I don't, I don't think now it has nearly the domain authority it did back then, even though I don't think it was. Domain authority just means Google gives preference to that to rank high. I mean, it was a blog. It wasn't a news site or anything like that. So um, that's kind of the possibilities with that. And Commission Junction is just promoting other stuff. This was over a 90-day period. You can see there's over $700,000 in there. Just promoting other people's stuff. Just simple. Like, if I'm going to, just what you're talking about. I talked to, I used GoToMeeting, and you saw in the previous one, there was a twenty-some thousand dollars from GoToMeeting. You know, like, there's just whatever you're doing, there's an affiliate program for it. Whether you're talking about DVDs, whether you're talking about insurance, or you're talking about whatever, there's an affiliate program for it. Um, so one of the big things, so I've had a blog, I started in 2003, it's going on, well it's over 10 years now. Um, and I started the blog, the blog is about me, right? And then around 2008, a friend of mine who's a huge marketer, John Reese, has email list and he said, you know dude, I can't believe you're not collecting emails. Because every time I email out to my list of subscribers to go buy something, I mean, just putting it bluntly, it's like going to the ATM machine. And I was like, ah, I think I'm too good to do that. You know, I don't want to do that. I think it's kind of scummy. But I'm like, all right, I'll do it. So 
I did this, I started collecting. I didn't promote anything though for a while. And so I basically just put a very non-intrusive thing at the bottom of the site. And you know, as, as it grew, I started getting more and more emails to the tune of like, only like 15,000 by the time I actually promoted my first thing in 2010. So I emailed out my first offer and it was called Video Boss. And it was a really good friend of mine who created this online training thing that helped people make videos. So I sent three emails and two blog posts and I made $23,000 and I was like, holy cow, that is the coolest thing ever. It is like going to an ATM machine. Now, that was, now I got like infatuated with it, right? Because video wasn't really targeted to my audience so I can see why it didn't do that great. Well, I thought it did great at the time. Um, the next one was a thing called List Control. The guy who made it is magical. He's Frank Kearney, he's brilliant, brilliant marketer. And from that I profited $42,000 from just one blog post, four emails to my list. Um, this is the same thing, product launch formula, how to make your own product and do that. I made more, 64,000. This is all in 2010. Um, the outsource force, how to outsource people, um, profited 29,000. The big one is affiliate.com. Now, because my audience is so targeted in affiliate marketing, I crushed it with this one. So I sent five emails. I didn't do one blog post about it. And I profited 142,000 some dollars from just sending those emails because these people were so targeted to this product. And because I outsold the top 10 combined, the guy bought me a new BMW X5, which is me here with my BMW. That was really cool, right? Just from an email list that I thought I was too good to do. And nobody hated me. Like I was like, oh my God, all these people that follow me are gonna be like, you're total sellout. No, they didn't at all, right? So um, just to recap, I promoted five products, sent some emails, did a couple blog posts, and it, this is all in 2010. Um, and did 361. Now, I chilled out after that. I was like so into it, right? But then I was like, you know, I'm just gonna promote one or two things a year. Um, about in March, we promoted a thing that was a really cool product about selling your own product on Amazon called Amazing Selling Machine. And I think we did somewhere around close to 70,000 in affiliate commissions from that. And that was like from two emails. So I'm pretty much selective now on what I do. I don't want to like really burn out people on stuff like that. Um, so now I'll start to get into more of a series of companies that I've created um, since that point. Uh, or since the point of, of 2007, kind of after the Elite Retreat was kind of formed. I just wanted to go into affiliate marketing a little more, just kind of show you what the potential is. Um, so in early 2007, like as I was talking about the AdSense ad, I had some problems with, and if you've ever seen Google AdSense anywhere, right? You can put them on your site, you make money with them, like I did. But there's problems with them, and one is that you have no editorial control, right? So if you have a site about, um, Carry Blue Terriers, which is the dog I have. It's very, people who own them are crazy about it and they're, they're just nuts about it. And the things they hate is like what's called puppy mills, which is people that just pump out these dogs and they sell them. And so the thing was she had this whole site about it, but when I go to her site, it shows me all these sites for these things that she would never want to be associated with. She has no control over that, okay? So the other problem I had is that in order for you to make money on these, people have to leave your site. Right? So that first time person who comes to your site one time and are actually interested in your content, because these blend in so well with your content, you're kind of tricking them to click on it and then they're gone. Right? And who knows if they'll be back when they could have turned into a customer or you know, signed up for your newsletter or whatever. So I had a beef with them and I said, you know what, what we should do is, and we being I was the only person in the company back then, but we sounds cooler. Right? So I was like, I want to build out an ad platform that looks like Google AdSense, but allows me to make my own ads. Like, I should be able to advertise whatever I want to advertise on there, right? So I did it, I called it Shoe Money Ads. Now, while I did Shoe Money Ads, um, I was at, in Las Vegas, it was about five in the morning at Binion's Casino, I'm playing poker, and there happened to be somebody from eBay there who was running their affiliate program, and she said, you, you made the Shoe Money Ads, right? And she said, we have all these affiliates that are doing really well with that. Like, what do you think about building one around eBay specifically? And so we, I said, well, we'll have to see what that would take and blah, blah, blah. And that's what started the talks. So 
then um, in 2007, um, I created auction ads, which was taking the, all the intellectual property from Shimoni ads and applying it just to eBay. And the company did very well. Um, four months after it launched, it was at 25,000 publishers and about two million a month in revenue. And I sold the company um, to a company called Lake Capital, which is about a $2 billion venture capital firm out of New York City. And uh, that was really well. I can't really disclose the price, but there's rumors out there that you can read if you really care. So the next thing I did was a product called Streamoney Tools. Um, and this was basically like all the tools that I use for internet marketing, like whether it was pay-per-click or SEO or um, pay-per-click is when you actually advertise on the search engine stuff. And I opened it up to the public, again, just something I wanted to do and allowed other people to use it. So we had a lot of people and we were getting, you know, 40,000 or so in subscriptions the first month. It grew a little bit, maintained it, and then as the search engines and other people disabled their ability to get some of these statistics, then we started to lose customers and we had to like, this one doesn't work anymore, this one doesn't, and then we just eventually just killed it off. But I took some of that intellectual property from that and put it into a different company. I did, this one was one of the ones where I broke my cardinal rule, where I have this thing about like the Coke theory, right? Which is like, if you make Coke, then you can make cherry Coke, you can make diet Coke, you can make cherry lemon Coke. Right, but like I can't make Coke, right? So for whatever reason, well I know why, because I'm a huge fan of mixed martial arts. And so I thought, man, I'm gonna make this site about mixed martial arts, it's gonna be awesome. So I bought fighters.com, I bought the domain for 60 grand, the guy wanted like 250 and I don't know, it was like the crash and I got it and I was thrilled. I hired all these staff writers from around the world to cover mixed martial arts event. Nobody went to the site. I couldn't sell advertising because I'm like, but I'm shoe money. And, and they're like, I don't care. And so I lost a bunch of money and I got really lucky in that somebody came in and bought the domain, just the domain for $386,000 six months after. So I kind of like, as crazy as it sounds, I just broke even on the thing. So I got super lucky on that deal. Lesson learned, don't deviate too far away, right? Because, um, and then the Shimoni system is a, is a training course I created in 2010. And this came about because I was at the Elite Retreat, my conference, and a guy came up to me and was like, I build training courses for people like you. Like I'll walk you through the whole process, I'll walk you through how to sell it and all this stuff. Well, never did business with him, but I was like, that's a good idea. So we did it ourselves. Right, and so I, I, there's over like 150 hours of video in there. There's all kinds of stuff. I spent six months producing it. Um, and to date, it's, it really sold well the first year and then it's tapered off. It still is for sale um, several places, but I give it out for free <laughs> too. And so even though people still pay for it at these various places it's for sale, um, you can actually go to shumai.com slash free SMS and you can get a free account. So I talked about Shimoni tools, right? And how the decline of that failed. So, or it just slowly declined as it went. But there was some really cool tools in there. And the SEO industry is this hot mythical thing, you know, where people, I'm a big quantified numbers guy. Like every, like SEO, search engine optimization is this thing because you can, it's all theories. Nobody knows exactly how Google ranks websites. Right? So these companies will sell you services and they, they've got the secret. right? So I'm more of a quantified guy. So what I did is I created a site that gave you a report, basically purely quantified on, you would put in your website. Step two would be put in your keywords that you're trying to rank for. And then step three would be put in your email. So um, then it would give you a report in a PDF format that was really sweet looking and it would show you how, so, um, so I made this and took the property from there and the report basically showed you what you're doing for your keywords versus the top 10 results in Google and other search engines. So it would say like, these people have links from these directories that are free directories out there. These people are putting this much, this keyword so many times on their page as people are using this in their title or whatever in their description. So it basically gave you quantified stuff of like, 
collectively, here's what all the people are doing that are beating you, right? So it just wasn't telling you what to do, it was just showing you what everyone's doing. So from that, you know, that was really valuable. So four months after launch, we were up to $10,000 a month in revenue. Um, almost 100% of that was paid out to affiliates. So virtually made none of that um, on the front end because you've got all these SEO companies out there, right? And they're paying like $10 per lead of someone who's interested in SEO. And I'm like, I'm getting like four or 500 a day, people coming in here. So this should be a gold mine for one of them. That was my whole point to it. So I tried selling it. Nobody's interested. I tried selling it for $60,000 and nobody's interested whatsoever. And then I watched Shark Tank. And then I had a company call me and they said, you know, we want to buy this site. And I said, well, I don't know. I've turned down offers for a hundred grand and whatnot. And you know, I really think it'll sell for a lot more. So if I was to sell it, I would want to keep at least 10% equity. And if it sold within the first year, I would want a 25% of that sale price. Cause I think, you know, you already have, probably have a plan. You already have somebody lined up to buy it, right? Just totally a complicated Shark Tank deal. And three days later, they sent me the um, initial, whatever it was, like 150 or whatever it was. And the kicker is, is that they sold the, the company as a whole, the parent company. And so they didn't really know how to equate, I mean like two months later. So this was rolled into their entire thing that they sold for many millions of dollars. And he called me and he's like, I don't really know how to evaluate this because we didn't sell this specifically as part of this, blah, 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 but I'm gonna send you a hundred grand. Okay, that works. Okay, so what I couldn't sell for 60, I sold for 250 because of Shark Tank. It's really a crazy positioning, this entrepreneurial world. Um, okay. So in 2011, 2012, if you've noticed, I've never really owned much for very long, right? And I think that that's a problem from a long-term stability thing. Yeah, I've made a lot of money, I put a lot of money aside, but I want to build something that will sustain forever. So I had two little girls and um, they're getting to be the age where I can't really code all night and, and work with people and my team and, and whatnot. So I build a team out and, um, and I was like, gosh, this would be awesome. I'm hire programmers and we can build anything we want. It'll be great. So we did. And so for link control, we, it's a really cool thing for the affiliate space without going, if you really want to see what it is, you can go to linkcontrol.com. There's a great video about it. Can't sign up for it because, well, we just basically decided that it was too big. It was too, there's, there would be so much work involved and it was more work than the three of us in the office could handle, right? So I quit it, it's still there. Um, it's not dead yet. I actually just had a conversation with uh, one person who is interested in buying it, but we've had that conversation with many people. Um, but now with my new Shark Tank approach, maybe we'll make it happen. Um, it, it's truly remarkable software though. It's, it's amazing, it'll change the industry as we know it. It's a shame that I didn't pursue it. Um, the next one is a site called Offer Pools, another unbelievably amazing website. And if you go to the site, you'll see it, it'll blow your mind. It's totally functional, totally work. The problem is, is it again, is way too, I thought like way too big. And we're three people in the office. So I was just like, I was super sad about it, as you can see with my sad face. Um, this is what the site looks like. You can go to offerpools.com and see it. It basically allows anyone to create their own pool, office pool around anything. Like how many shots can Johnny take before he pukes? You know, how many, whatever you can do, like final four pools, you can do whatever you want. Very awesome site. Um, all right, so like I said, you can go there. But now I really found the key company that we're doing now which is called PAR program, which is people acquisition retention. A huge reason why all of my companies that were major successes were so was because of email marketing. People would sign up for the site, like free SEO report, you put in your email, and then I'd start to drip you content about my background, what to look out for, if you're gonna buy links, this is a company to buy them through. If you're gonna do this, if you're gonna look for a web hosting company, and all of those I got kickbacks from. Right? So that was kind of how we actually made money on the back end of that. Um, everything on that. So, but it was rough at the beginning because now 
all of my other revenues and stuff. I burned a lot of money on those other two companies, waste a lot of money in development. And this one we spent a ton of development. Um, and this company in particular was about $150,000 in debt at the beginning of this year, which wasn't real exciting. Um, and that was just from constant overhead building up, no revenue coming in, development, all that stuff. Um, and so where we're at right now with it, October 1st, we've got about 30 clients in our first 10 months. Um, it's at about 240,000 in profit, so it was about a 400K turnaround this year, which is super exciting. But it's not, um, it's really exciting, but unlike all the other things I wanna do, I wanna take this one to the house, right? This is the future of my whole company, because if you see with auction ads, with Shoe Money Tools, with NextPim, with other things, um, all those free issue report, all those things. Somebody should have been in charge of that, managing it, build the staff up, all that stuff. And that's something I didn't have any experience with and no education about. And so that's why I sold them. I think with auction ads, if you look at the valuation, um, something that's doing 2,000 or 2 million a month in gross revenue in only its fourth month would be worth a lot more than what I sold it for. And actually, the company that bought it um, about two years ago finally told me that they were ready to pay about four times more than what they paid me. So, that, but I should have bought a staff in. I should have maintained that site and I should have kept it going. So right now with this, we're kind of at that point of normally I would sell a company, right? And we, we've had people inquire about purchasing the company. Um, we're just spread out way too thin. Um, so these are kind of our options we have right now, which is to just build out the team ourselves. Um, to you know, raise money from a VC firm or you know, a private investor or to merge with an existing agency that already offers all the service that the PAR program provides. So it's kind of the missing component for that. Um, so this is kind of our target is um, you know, within, we're definitely on pace for this uh, within a year from launching to hit you know, a million in gross revenue. And then with the right team, we should be able to hit five million by the end of next year. And once we have that kind of structure and scalability in place, then sky's the limit. And I think we'll be able to, because the market for this product is enormous and it's really big, okay? So just like the Shumani playbook is really, as I talked about before, is to build something that you want, that you would use. My blog was about me. Other people found value in that, that's great. You know, but I didn't really build it for them. And sometimes people will say things like, your site doesn't help me make money. And I'm like, well, yeah, because it's about me. You know, so live with it. Um, you know, like, like auction ads was something that I wanted. You know, my conference I built was something that I wanted to attend. Everything that was successful was something that I truly would use every day. I wanted it. And a lot of times it's just, you know, building a better mousetrap. Um, you know, a lot of times out there, like auction ads, we launched that, there was eight other companies doing exactly what we were doing, including eBay, who was powering us, right? And they were five years and five million in development on that thing, and they still never launched their platform. But, you know, we came out of the box trucking because we built a better mousetrap. We took all the best features that they had and then implemented, like, all the things that I always, I would want, right? And then just opened it up to people. So, and that's the same thing, like I said, if you see link control auction ads, shoe money tools, all those things are just, it's very simple to me, um, is just to build something that you would want to use every day. And I always tell people, because they're always like, well, how do I get started? Should I buy this product? And I'm like, you don't have to buy nothing. Just, you know, and they're like, well, I don't know how to program. And I'm like, I didn't either. Like, my investment was I went to Barnes and Nobles and I bought a book about PHP programming or HTML or, I mean, that's what I did. That's how I built NextPim. As crazy as that sounds, I knew nothing about programming, a little bit of scripting, but I went and I bought books on HTML and all this stuff and that's how I built the site. And I just, there's all these, now is even a better time because there's all these tutorials online. So, um, just kind of like some closing things is like, you guys have an enormous advantage over me because I didn't really go to college. I barely made it through high school, and college, it's, it's interesting because like in the Western Illinois University alumni guide, I'm noted as a notable alumni, and I'm, it's also on my Wikipedia page and their Wikipedia page, I'm listed, I never have set foot on their campus. So my mother and my aunt, 
both went there and have degrees and get the newsletter every year that has notable alumni in the back and I'm listed out of 40 people. And the ironic thing is I never attended. Just recognize the opportunity and the time we live in right now is just, it's an amazing time where I've known so many people who created a free service or, or I mean created a service or a blog or a site. Like if you, if you ever heard of I Can Ask Cheeseburger, which is the stupid cat photos with you guys might like. I think it's the dumbest thing ever with the cat and the funny things. There's a couple of funny ones, but for the most part, I think they're pretty not so much. So those kids, um, I met those kids. Uh, it was a guy and his wife. They started it on a free WordPress blog, and their whole thing was like, if cats could talk, what would they talk like? You know, what would their language be? And that was the thing, and they would just find funny photos, and then they allowed it, obviously, where people could upload photos and people could caption them and whatever one worked the best. And so um, that site, I can't disclose how much it was, but let's just say it sold for millions of dollars. And that was something they started for free, never paid a dime the whole way through, pure profit, and sold it for millions of dollars. And I know, because I know those kids, and then I know the, the investment group that purchased them. Um, another thing is that uh, another site, like the mixed martial arts stuff I was talking about, a guy who, First started a poker blog on Blogger, free site, became one of the highest ranking sites for everything poker, and, and poker used to be the big affiliate space. If you link somebody to a poker website, they signed up, you got like 800 bucks, 400, 800 bucks, depends on how much they deposit. Huge, huge affiliate industry. And so he sold that site for a lot, and again, I don't remember the amount, I remember millions. And then he decided, He's gonna start a mixed martial arts website, much like me, only he did it very well, but he did it just for fun. He just wrote about his own thoughts. He was the only writer for three years. And it started as MMA or UFC junkie.wordpress.org or whatever their free version is. And then it became his own UFC junkie.com, and then he got a threatening letter from the UFC, so then it became MMA junkie.com. And the site just sold for 15 million to USA Today, right? Totally free, totally free thing. And so I talk to people every day about, they're just like, I don't have money to start, I don't have time to start. And I'm like, why not? Why do you have this time? You know, and it doesn't cost anything to start. So, you know, that would be kind of my, my thing is you guys have a, a huge leg up in that you have business, you guys are going through the business school, right? And so you guys want to be entrepreneurs and stuff. And you have a lot better education on running a company than I do. Right, and so for me, you can see a lot of the places where, I don't wanna call them failures, they're more like educational experiences where I should have stayed with a company, built a business plan, never built a business plan ever, and done the right structure and those companies could have been, like the auction ads one or the next one, could have been the next YouTube, you know, for all I know. Um, but I sold myself short. So anyway, those are some leaving thoughts, so thanks for coming today. And do you have any questions? Have you used, uh Amazon, Amazon's affiliate program? I have. Um, Amazon is, there's, there's this new, this is why I'm talking about like the opportunity we have now because it's drastically changing. And the Amazon um, platform in specific, is, there's a new, there's a thing called the Nexus Tax Law, which states these, all the money in this affiliate marketing are like, where's our, where's our piece? So they've um, already, I know Colorado, California, and New York have instituted this law and so it's basically, I think it amounts to about a 15 to 20% tax on affiliate revenue. So companies like Amazon and these other companies, which were built by affiliates, I mean, Amazon was made because of affiliate marketers. Now we're just like, let's just kill it. And I've talked to my friends inside Amazon that we've done business with before, and they're like, we don't need affiliates now. <laughs> you know, they, they actually like, this is a great excuse for us to can it. So. You can still make money with Amazon, but they've, the way they've reduced it, I mean, there used to be people that would just make so much money through the Amazon affiliate program, and now they've, if you guys are familiar with how cookies work, basically like I send you to Amazon to buy a DVD, and I get credit, they used to set a 120 day cookie, like you, six months. They used it to, uh, yeah, I think it's like a day now. <laughs> so, but you, you know, the great thing about Amazon is, you don't shop there once, right? And so I'd get credit for anything you bought for the next six months, I got 8% of that value. So you wanna go on there and buy a fridge or a grill or whatever, I'm raking it in, right? So um, when I launched my book, um, 
which we have a couple copies to give out. It's an excellent book, if I say so myself. Um, it's just about my life story. It's not. It's autobiography. It's not like how to make money on the internet. But it sold a ton, and um, the cool thing about that is I drove people through my affiliate links to buy the book, <laughs> and I made more money through the affiliate side than I did from the book sales, right? Because people, you only get like, I don't know, I think we get like $3. Yeah, very much off the book. Yeah, you don't make very much. Like Kindles. Yeah, that's like, the thing is like people will buy a $90, $100, some dollar Kindle, you get, well, we were in the 12% region, right? So I get 12 bucks for a Kindle, I get $3 if someone buys my book. I get, and then some people will go in there and buy $800 worth of stuff, right? Well, you just made 80 bucks, right? So the Amazon affiliate program is really interesting. But that's what you're going to start seeing is all these companies killing their affiliate programs because of this tax stuff. It's going to get really complicated. That's a good hey, question. I, comment, uh, I uh, my, first, my first ever Google check, uh, I got tucked in Google for AdSense checks and Google and Obviously, I saw yours. Yeah. That's the normal one, but uh, that's, that's, first, that's the first thing I did when I got my Google check because I took a picture of it just like you did. <laughs> it's, it's pretty inspiring. You should send it in because we have a gallery of people that just oh, yeah. send their pictures in with their check, yeah. Yeah. It actually used to show up, number one, if you just Googled check because it was like so many people linked to it and stuff. It was kind of a phenomenon when it happened that it just nobody believed that it was really true. For many years, there was like this big debate of whether it was photoshopped or not. Because people were like, because it's spelled check like C H E Q U E. And people were like, they don't, you know, why would they spell it like that? And, and it's because all of their processing went out of Ireland. Um, so I just, I loved the debate because either way I won, you know. And then we had a lawsuit in 2009, which was very publicized on a lot of major things news outlets um, uh, where we sued a Google employee. Uh, where I can't legally discuss too much of it, but um, it made, you, if you ever want to read about it, you can, it's, it's made a lot of headlines. Anyway, during that process, Google actually submitted an affidavit saying that that was real. So that ended the debate about that. But I kept it, you know, for a long time. Just I just, I would actually go on forums and be like, ah, this looks fake. And <laughs> it's amazing how much traffic that brings. Like, I always tell people, like, I don't care if they think it's fake. Like, if you write things that give people value, then you write things that give people value. It doesn't matter if it's fake or not. I, I always tell people, assume it's all fake. And if you get something out of it, then great. That's what matters. How did you, like, create the first initial buzz, like, to get all the traffic to um, shootmoney.com? Um, see, some of the things I did... I've done a lot of things to be, it's all about like, I'm kind of a psychological kind of person of like what, like there's a couple things that really piss people off. So like religion, people are very passionate about religion. So um, one, I mean, I'm trying to think of a specific religion, but and I got, actually got a lot of great um, feedback from it, but there was some negative publicity, but it helps the blog, right? So. Um, Another thing I did, the biggest thing that got the most links and the most stuff was I made a post that said, um, is George Bush a great president or the greatest president ever? And holy cow, I mean, just just like everyone linking to it and just baiting people, just baiting them. I challenged this guy to fight me one time who was also in the industry, which is like ignited the industry. It was like all hyped up. These guys are going to fight and everything. And it never happened, but it didn't matter. The story was told, the links were present. And the buzz was there. And at the end of the day, nobody even remembers. I mean, I pulled so much stuff. Um, just be yourself, right? And you know, in the past, did you ever feel bad, like um, selling this crappy affiliate, like you know, like affiliate uh, products? Yeah, I've written about that. Because there's a lot of bad ones out there, like scams. Sure. Um. Sometimes it's interesting, right? Because, and I'm not trying to divert the question, but if you look at things like Farmville, there's probably been nothing that's more hurtful to the consumer than Farmville because the offers you have to do and the free trials and all this stuff is like 
people don't even realize, like when they sign up for that free trial, they're gonna be rebuilt for that, and then they're gonna be built for these other free trials that come with that, right? And it was back in the days of the free iPods and stuff like that. Now, specifically to me, the, the ringtone stuff, I made an absolute killing off of, right? And when I went to cancel my phone, when I moved from Sprint over to um, Verizon or AT&T at that time, I was subscribed to eight ringtone things that were billing me $20 a month. I never even realized it, right? Because they're automatically factored in. Most people would see that on their bill. But, I mean, I got a lot of people to sign up for that. You know, and I don't know. Is that one of the same? I mean, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's like it's a consumer's decision. But, you know, you're selling products. And so there's a lot of super sketchy stuff out there that I wouldn't promote. Um, as I am right now, but I also wouldn't look down on anyone. I mean, it's perfectly legal. Like the Cyberry craze, right? Like, yeah. um, that's the big one that they called it slinging berries and stuff. And it was really funny because basically, like, they would have these free, you get a free bottle of a Cyberry, you just pay $4.95 shipping and handling. And if I led one of you guys to do that, I would get $55 if you would just get a free bottle, right? And the, their whole model was, there's these, so their, their whole model was is not only were you in that trial, but then they had all these other companies that they automatically enrolled you in because they had their credit card now. And so one was like, it was, it was actually like pretty smart, but even though super, super bad, um, it was like a $5 a month credit security protection, right? So you'd be billed on your credit card like $2 or $5 a month and it would just say, um, you know, credit card security, right? And so it looks like it's part of your bank services, right? I don't know. There's a guy right now, if you guys are really interested in following like super sketchy people who've made a billion dollars doing sketchy stuff, perfectly legal sketchy stuff, there's a case and they can't figure out what to pin him on, but they got, I mean, he's a bad guy, um, but he's been doing it legally. His name is Jeremy Johnson out of Utah. And he's, they caught him with like, I don't know, it was 60 grand in a, in a, he owns like a bunch of helicopters and planes and he was getting in one of his choppers and headed to Costa Rica when they indicted him. So it's a really fascinating case because now they're going after him for mail fraud. The first they tried doing wire fraud, saying that because it was over phone lines and clicking and people were misled, they didn't win at that. So now they're trying, and the whole time, the guy's got a billion dollars, right? And so anyway, they're trying to get him for mail fraud because he actually sent out products over mail, right? The free trial, right? And so the, um, remind me of Kevin Trudeau too. So basically like the whole, the whole thing was is, is now they're like a couple of people are saying they didn't get it, right? So now they're saying that's mail fraud, right? So whatever. So we'll see what they end up charging him with. The whole time he's been held without bail for going on two years. Right? And so it's crazy like how they can hold somebody who they can't even figure out what to charge them with. But, so the funny thing is I know a lot of people that know him. And one of them are these twins out of Utah. And one of them goes and visits him all the time. And he's always, he's always joking with me about, because the big rumor is, is that he's got all these, this gold and platinum bars buried around Utah and in the mountains and stuff. Because they can't find the cash, right? And so it's, it's funny because they're like, yeah, when we go in, he's like, I'm always like, hey, do you, you know any place I should take the kids? Like, you know, like, he's like, should any place I should go fishing? Like, because the rumor is he's got these GPS coordinates of where all the golden platinum bars and all this stuff's hidden. It's like out of a movie, right? So it's, it's just a fascinating story. Um, the other guy, Kevin Trudeau, which you guys may know who he is, may not, he sells all these products and he was one of our biggest affiliates selling our stuff and then I got to know him and talked about what he does and he he sold like 40 million dollars worth of products online and then got zinged by the FTC and basically he couldn't sell more products online right something like that I forget what it was but the, and, and it, one of our conversations was really funny because he's like he's like you know my biggest hit was that brain charge formula which was like how to get unlock the full potential of your brain. And he's like, so I come up with it one night, the next day I go in the studio, because he had his own studio, and I start recording myself pitching it, and how I'm gonna sell it, and the questions I'm gonna answer to the fake reporter who's gonna interview me for this infomercial, right? So he's like, and then I like it, I like the script, 
The next week, I hire the reporter, I stack the studio audience, you know, who are all like, oh gosh, it's great. And we sell, he's like, we sell like 300,000 bottles of this product, and we don't have this product. <laughs> And that's the crazy thing about a lot of these internet marketers that are nuts. I mean, like, imagine how crazy that is. Like, hey, we just sold 300,000 bottles of something we don't have, and the infomercial keeps going. So, you know, then he had to call somebody up in China and make, put NutraSweet in a pill or something. I don't even know what the hell it was, you know, but it's, you know, the thing is it all has that placebo thing because you got all these testimonies from people that were just like, I can think smarter, I can think, you know, I'm like so much more effective, you know, and all this stuff. And he's like, the crazy thing is, dude, is like people really believe it made them smarter. And, all right, so that's something we probably shouldn't say. He probably wouldn't like that. But, um, yeah, I could go on story after story after story about this whole crazy internet thing, you know, and all, how all that stuff works.